ANC MPs Pemi Majudina and Kubudile Dianti have been cleared of bribery accusations. Parliament's Ethics Committee was investigating allegations Majudina and Dianti tried to solicit a bribe from the former public protector advocate Busisiwim Kwebane's husband, David Skosana. At the same time, the Section 194 uh, Committee, uh, chaired by Dianti, has found Mkwebane guilty of misconduct and recommended that she should be removed of public protector. Now, that vote is happening on Monday. Parliament needs 267 members for the removal of the suspended public protector. Let's uh, talk more about this now with political analyst Amokutle Mbandlua, who joins us virtually from Durban. Uh, Amokutle, thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, a really co complex story uh, being brought together by this one story today specifically. It all seems to be coming to a point for the former public protector. What do you make of this latest development, the decision to clear the bribery ac uh, accusations brought by Mkwebane and her husband? Oh, it seems the technical gremlins and uh, uh, load shedding has been against us tonight with regards to our crossings via uh, Zoom to various parts of the country. So hopefully we can have that conversation um, in a little while. We'll uh, try and see if Zamakushli can hear us. Zamakushli, um, I was saying that the, all of this seems to be coming to a point for the former public protector. What do you make of this latest decision to clear those bribery ac ac um, allegations? Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. Good evening to yourself and uh, your viewers at home. Well, what I would like to say is the entire process of the impeachment of the public protector has been uh, politicized. And uh, it's actually showing even now that um, there's something beyond what they actually say the public protector have done. And also, based on what... Um, well, the accusation that has been made by the public protector against the panel members. I think also she was actually retaliating to, to the allegations that uh, those who are sitting in the panel have a political agenda to achieve, not necessarily uh, to get rid of her because she's incompetent, not because she's not doing her work properly, but because there's a political agenda in place. But what is also very, very interesting for me is the fact that uh, the, the matter will be voted in on Monday. And uh, we know that uh, the ruling party is the majority, and there's no way that the, the ruling party will vote against a decision that was taken by its own president in this particular matter. And, um, and that is why the opposition parties who feel that the public protector has been victimized, uh, they feel that... Uh, maybe the secret ballot will actually do justice uh, in terms of dealing with this particular matter. But also, I don't think whether secret ballot or, or by the show of hands will actually have a different outcome in this particular matter. Because, of course, the, the, the chief whip of the ANC will actually give instructions to members of the ANC mm. who are members of parliament on how they should vote on this particular matter. And, uh, and, and I'm sure nobody would want to vote otherwise, especially since we are actually approaching election. Ah, we seem to have lost. Year. So no NC member will actually vote at our office. It's coming to an end as members of parliament. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze in one more question to you, Zamakushle, because it does seem our signal is a little bit shaky to you. So let's um, uh, uh, skip to another story um, in the headlines today, and that's the one involving the Deputy President Paul Mashatile. And he was in the National Assembly today, uh, reiterating that he was not in his blue light motorcade when they allegedly um, attacked uh, the occupants of uh, uh, a couple of vehicles here on the Joburg Highway. Uh, this is a story that's really tainted his office, hasn't it? How have you read how it's played out? Uh, well, uh, I think I, I was actually waiting for the deputy president to actually respond to, to the incident, even earlier than uh, the, the accused were taken to court or they were even charged. Unfortunately, the deputy president took his time to actually read into the matter and respond. But I think uh, he, he should be 
uh, it should also be held accountable because, you know, it should actually give instruction because they are taking these instructions. And even if he was not in the, in the, in the vehicle at that particular time, but it should actually send a strong message even to those who are who are actually with him or those who might be with him even in the future who might even attempt to actually show the same behavior that his uh, security personnel have shown in the, in, to the public. I think he also needs to, to send a very strong message. He needs to reprimand whoever that is in charge because I believe that uh, within the security cluster, there's someone involved, or there's someone responsible for the security personnel of the government officials, particularly senior government officials like, like the deputy president. Even those who were actually caught, those who were misbehaving, uh, who were actually involved in the incident, I'm sure there, there was someone that was, that was in charge, someone who is commanding the, the security personnel. So that particular individual should be uh, held accountable for this. And the president, the British president must send a strong message even to, to those who are not caught uh, in the scene uh, during that particular incident. Okay, so we're going to have to wait and see how it all pans out. Political analyst Amakushle Mbandwa uh, joining us live there um, from Durban. We thank him for his time and insight this evening.